Biomimicry is something that we see a lot in technology. We, we want to imitate nature when we're building and engineering things that uh, for situations where it would be most preferable. Uh, case in point, we have a robotic roach because <laughs> those things will outlive us all. Well, uh, maybe. <laughs> there are certain studies that say uh, that cockroaches are the most resilient uh, creatures, most likely. Uh, but let's take a look at what the University of uh, California, Berkeley, has been designing. Um, so it is a very interesting uh, in interior system. There's, yep, that's, I'm that's, very distracted by how right gross there. it looks. <laughs> uh, but roach bodies are very uh, elastic. They stand normally 10 millimeters or less than half an inch tall. They can squeeze through extremely narrow gaps. Um, and they can usually withstand forces 300 times their own body weight while traversing uh, small crevices of, and up to 900 times body weight without injury. So they're very resilient, basically, mm -hmm. very elastic, very strong. And uh, this is something um, it can be irritating if you see a roach in your kitchen, but it can also be something that inspires uh, robotic engineering, and thus this. And that's exactly what the researchers at uh, the at University of California Berkeley at, in integrative biology. That's exactly what they did. Is they looked at cockroaches and cockroaches, like most insects, have an exoskeleton mm -hmm. and then flexible membrane connecting those plaques of chitin, which make the structure. Mm -hmm. And they used that to create a robot that hope will be able to aid rescue workers mm -hmm. in the future in crawling into small spaces and maybe, you know, hopefully potentially save lives. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting when you think, like, why a roach? But it's, you know, mm -hmm. they can crawl under very small crevices, squeeze themselves very small, but still stay uh, very strong and resilient. Um, some things that they had to consider when making this were the, the locomotion that was inside mm -hmm. the confined locomotion, how to make this work in a way mm -hmm. where it would actually work and be sound. <laughs> Um, it is interesting to see this, I, and it's by far not the first time we've seen a robotic insect. I talked about bio, biomimicry yes. before, which we can see in a lot of different places, mm -hmm. and even outside robotics, um, such as engineering, um, design. It's, it's natural for humans to want to do that. And one of the things, I mean, one of the reasons they picked the cockroaches is not only, like you mentioned, because of their very particular style of locomotion, which is called uh, body friction crawling, I believe, body friction legged crawling, which is interesting because it doesn't slow them down. Mm -hmm. So normally we envision a, a cre creature or an insect crawling in through a small crevice, and we imagine that compression as something that will inhibit the creature from moving at the same speed, right. but it doesn't. It still moves at about 20 body lengths per second, mm -hmm. which is really fast. And one of the interesting things that I found reading up on not just this this robot, but also on cockroaches, is that there is such a thing called thigmotaxis. Okay. I believe that's how you pronounce it, so if I'm pronouncing it wrong, go ahead and leave it in the comments. But uh, thigmotaxis, which means that the cockroaches feel better or feel what? more comfortable confined in these small spaces because they have bristles with... Um, mechanical receptors that will alert them in case there's danger. So when you're about to step on a cockroach, they move with the, with air and they alert the cockroach that there's danger coming. Wow. And so cockroaches feel comfortable in small crevices. That was just okay. an interesting fun fact. No, that's, that's really interesting. Well, that that is certainly um, a biological mechanism that has helped ensure survival. Yes. Uh, so I don't know if we can, well, perhaps sensors for mm -hmm. a, a robotic version um, to make sure that it, it does things that are uh, protecting its own That's body. interesting. If something else is going to collapse, it'll be the first one to know, and potentially it could expand or protect. Utilize or, the same yeah. uh, biological impulses a roach might use, yeah. which is pretty cool. Um, this is not the first instance of a robot uh, being made after a bug. <laughs> we also, we've actually done these on this channel, a robotic bee. Oh, really? Uh -huh. So it would be able to fly around in a with a very similar motion to a bee, mm -hmm. um, and that would be used kind of like a, a miniature drone. Or uh, There is also MIT's inchworm robot, which would be used in a similar way that these uh, roach-inspired robots would be used for, which is to uh, sneak into small crevices and perhaps aid in uh, rescue work. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, if you imagine, like, rubble, how are you going to get through that? What could get through this? And then you think, oh, there goes a bug. 
works out just great. Um, so it's I, I really like to look at the these uh, instances of um, technology imitating our the world around <laughs> us and doing this bio inspired robotic. Uh, locomotion. Not just insects too. Uh, a lot of robotic studies are being done now on and conducted on um, imitating an octopus because for the same premise basically mm -hmm. it can crawl into crevices or in or out of crevices that are so much smaller than its body mm -hmm. and you know the, the way it uses the compression is something that we still have not been able to figure out because we have so many parts and we don't know exactly how to condense them when we're trying to move forward at the same speed. Yeah. So this is why the cockroach was so interesting. It is. I, I think it's really interesting and it has a lot of potential. Audience, what is what is your opinion on this? I had two questions in my head. One, what do you think of the robotic roach? Two, how else can we have animals inspire us to make more and better uh, robotic technologies. Perhaps you're thinking of that dog that can't be kicked over. It's a robotic dog. That's why they're kicking it. Let us know below in the comments and please like and subscribe for more.